Java 18 is going to be released on March 22nd, 2022. So we won't have to wait that long. And we already know all the features that will be included because the development entered the second stabilization phase. But are these features useful in practice? Let's find it out. My name is Dmitry Chuyko, and today we will explore all the jabs that will be added to the next Java release to see if they are actually good and how they will affect the future application development. So Java 18 is not a long-term support release, which means it will not be supported for that long. So why should we care? Well, the technical releases can be used for testing out the new features, so they won't be necessarily utilized for actual development. Such changes are presented in incubator or preview form, so the community could try them out and give feedback. But this means we are getting a chance to take a glance into the future, then the next LTS release will be out with these features polished and ready for production. So don't underestimate the importance of any numbered release. And with that, let's dive into all the jabs and see how they will affect our life in the next few years. We are going to talk about every single jab that is in Java 18. I will explain their significance, the reason for their implementation, and how the new feature will be utilized in real life. This jab changed the default car set for the runtime and for Java source file to UTF-8. To understand its significance, let's see how car sets work in current Java versions. Right now, your default car set is environment dependent, meaning it's the same one that your operating system uses, which is fine when you run your application in your own machine. But let's say you're in the US and your Japanese colleague needs to run the app as well, and her OS uses another system encoding. What happens then? There are two possible issues in this situation. One, the application will distort text to data because it will fail in understanding that they are encoded in different car sets. Two, the compiler will be unable to compile source Java files made on your computer. But if both JDKs use the same encoding by default, everything will work as intended. This jab adds the command to run a simple web server with minimal functionality. Provide the address and open the port or expect loopback and port 8000 by default. The command itself is Java server, as you might guess. While this server is not intended for production, it is great for testing, prototyping, and learning. You can customize it somewhat and even provide your own API implementation. Now, this change could be perceived as small. But for some developers, it is the most important and exciting one of the whole release. It introduces the snippet tag for Java Doc standard Docklet. That simplifies the inclusion of example source code in the documentation. The tag will not only mark up the code included in the comments, but also implies validating it the same way as it happens to the main code, drastically reducing the chance of human error. This enhancement is full of features like writing not only internal but also external file and hybrid snippets, highlighting and linking the text to declarations elsewhere in the API. This job affects the inner workings of Java computing. It re-implements java.lang.reflect or using method handles, replacing dynamic bytecode generation variants of reflective operations. This enhancement will lessen the usage of unsafe API in poor reflection and also help the development of new language features like primitive objects. The Vector API was first introduced in Java 16, so it's the third incubator version. The Vector API significantly improves application performance in some cases. It allows you to manually write platform-independent vector algorithms in Java. It is necessary for the performance of complex calculations, then the existing automatic hotspot loop vectorization doesn't work. 
Some enhancements were added to the previous version of the API, including support for ARM scalable vector extension and improved implementation of vector operations that use masks. In practice, the vector API can be used in areas such as financial operations, machine learning, and cryptography. The next step introduces the server provider interface, so the java.net.init address API could use alternative resolvers. This is done with several goals in mind, including testing and customization by frameworks. And last but not least, an alternative resolver could implement the DNS without it being blocked on the OS level, which allows, for example, effective fork of many Project Loom virtual threads than they process network requests. The following jab is also the enhancement of a previous one, a second incubator of foreign function and memory API. It allows the usage of native libraries, foreign functions, and accessing the foreign memory with boosted performance. This time, there are new carriers implemented, which are Boolean and memory address, along with a simpler API to obtain downcall method handles and manage temporal dependencies between the resource scopes. Also, a new API for copying Java arrays to and from memory segments is introduced. And again, we see a new implementation of a previously introduced feature, pattern matching for switch. It allows an expression or statement to be tested against several patterns, each with a specific action. It is important to notice that all existing switch expressions and statements will still compile. It is an enhancement that requires a lot of reading to properly understand it, so you can explore it in the article on our blog. You can find the link in the description for this video. This chap is dedicated to the deprecation of a very old function that was included in Java since version 1.0. It is called finalization, and it was a constant source of headache for developers for more than 20 years. Let's see why. Java has built-in automatic memory management. There are garbage collectors that free memory and this happens behind the scenes. They check for objects that are unreachable and then the garbage collector decides that they are no longer needed, it frees their memory. The problem is that some of these objects represent resources provided by the operating system such as an open file descriptor or block of native memory. For them, reclaiming heap memory is not enough. The program has to release the underlying resource back to the operating system. So, in case it does not happen, the resources are leaked, they are still considered in use by the OS, and therefore are not freed. As the application works, the number of such leaks grows, and they create vulnerabilities or just crash the program. The finalization was invented as a way to get rid of leaks, but unfortunately it did not work that great, because of unpredictable and unconstrained behavior. Not recommended for use for some time, now it's deprecated for remove. The process will take time because this function is used in many applications and standard Java API. Alternative mechanisms are tried with resources introduced in Java 7 and explicit cleaners introduced in Java 9. So these are new features in Java 8. We not only work towards adding the new functionality, but also to make Java faster and more convenient to work with. Once again, the world of Java development is never stale, and we look forward to many things. That was Dmitry Chuyko, an OpenJDK committer and performance architect at Belsoft. Thank you for watching.